What's up, you guys? This is Mr. Greek 2002. In today's video, we're going to be taking a very close look at my 2011 until 2018 Volkswagen Jetta. All models could be S, could be SE, could be SEL, but basically all model Jettas, all year Jettas of that year, with the basic model headlights. Basically, the halogen headlights with no LEDs in them, just the regular headlights. So, I'm making this video for you guys today because on the road, I've seen tons and tons of general model S's and SE's, especially with the standard halogen headlights and their DRL bulbs burned out. So, they're driving with no bulbs on the front end of the car is lit on. So, I think that's a huge safety factor. And uh, accident risk because you know some drivers won't really notice those cars coming towards them if there's no headlight bulbs on in them. So today I'm showing you the inside close look of a headlight that I have here today, the spare one. It came off my car because I recently upgraded to the 2017 Jetta Woodbury Edition headlights with the LED strip in them. All right, guys. So without further ado. On the video. This is the headlight I'll be showing you guys today. It's the passenger side one. Basically the one that came off of my car. So here it is. Let's see inside. Turn the table around. Okay. Yep. There's a halogen bulb inside there. There's a bulb inside there. There's an LED bulb in there. In the daytime running lights. There's a amber bulb here for trim signals. So, all the bulbs look pretty much stuck, except for the daytime light one, basically. So, I'm going to turn this headlight around. The revolving table. And here's the back of the headlight. Okay. So, first time, let's start off with the daytime light bulb. So, in order to get to it, obviously, you leave this headlight housing still installed in your car. But you put your hand down, you know, down the the engine bay down here and you turn this headlight housing light bulb cap to the left I believe you see here it says open left close right all right guys let's go ahead now and open it up turning it to the left like it says right here there we go all right make sure you hold this very tightly do not drop it down into the engine bay at the bottom of it basically because it's gonna be you know very hard to find and pick up again. So I put this, you know, basically anywhere you want. Could be on top of the metal plate here, you could put it on the engine, you know, cover or engine intake, wherever you want basically. So for all our sakes we put it on top of here. Alright. It's got a good close up now of the interior of this headlight assembly. So here we go guys. This right here is a main headlight bulb, which I do find a lot of cars in the area where I live here, a lot of Marshall Jetta cars, have the actual headlight bulb burned out too, as well as their daytime running light bulb. So for our purposes here today, the daytime running light bulb is actually back here, you can see it. It's one right here, guys. You can see it right there. It's very hard to get to, especially with the headlight housing still installed in the car. You put a couple fingers in there. And turn to the left. Comes right out. The wires will help get it out. And there's the actual data relay bulb. So here it is. You push in and turn to the left to take it out. There's the pins. They're just 180 degree pins. They're not. Uh, Offset, they're actually just straight pins. And you match it with the uh, notches in here, I think. Put it back in. Turn to the right. It's installed. Make sure it doesn't come out when you pull it. That's it. You're done. You replace the bulb with a new one. At this point, you can actually leave the actual data run light bulb. Kind of like, you know, in there. While you turn on the car with a key to see if it actually lights up or not. To make sure the bulb is, you know, good, for one. To make sure you install it correctly and whatnot, okay? 
And then once that's done, you gotta put it back in the car. Again, using a couple of fingers. Now here, it seems like there's a couple, as you can see inside there, there's a couple of notches on the actual bulb uh, opening there on top of the opening. So I guess the notches match up with these notches here in this socket thing. So you just go in, try to match the female part with the male part of those notches. And then turn it to the right. But I tell you, it's a pain in the butt to take it out and then put it back in again. And that's partly why no one in the world is doing it because that's such a hard job it is to do. See, it goes in there, kind of at an angle with this, this clip, this tab here and this uh, wire pin, kind of at an angle. It went in, you turn to the right to lock it in place. My hand's so big, you can barely even put it inside the housing. There we go. It's installed. It was very difficult. I had to put pretty much my whole hand in here just to do it, basically. Without doing that, you can't really do it so easily. Uh, what you can try to do is use tools, obviously. Some, you know, some needle nose pliers that have fat uh, nose, not uh, skinny nose ends, to grab this and help turn it either way. Or find a friend with very small hands, like a young teenager and whatnot, okay? That's done and replaced. Next up is the headlight bulb. So here it is. Same thing, turn to the left to take it out. It's out, very easy. A lot more easier than the daytime headlight bulb, that's for sure. So here it is. So it just comes right out to so grab the metal base of it. Wiggle it back and forth, comes right out, see? Put the new one on, okay? Make sure the new one installs the same way you, you took it off as because that matters when you put it back in, it has to line up properly. So I think the top of the top of the headlight bulb goes towards the top of the assembly. So here you could see, yeah, there's some grooves here. Then you stick this headlight bulb into and you turn it and the flaps on the extra headlight bulb, see metal pin here, goes under these screws. See the pin, the metal pin that's on the headlight assembly, headlight bulb assembly, goes under these screws here. See, it goes under the screws, that's where it's screwed in place. Okay, so that's done. We can reclose back up our headlight cap here. Okay, you close it with this tab Slide to the left. Okay, then you lock it in place like so. There you go, locked, okay. And next we're on to the high beam bulb. Now this bulb in here is probably the last bulb you'll ever change in this car. If you ever, you know, get the chance to do so. Most likely your car will end up being sold or scrapped in an accident before you change this bulb out. But same procedure as the headlight bulb. Turn the left, comes out. Same bulb, another H7 bulb. Same thing, you just pull it out on the middle part of the headlight bulb itself. Maybe wiggling around a little bit. Comes out. See it? Same thing as the headlight bulb, basically. Put it back inside the same way you took it out. Make sure you know the orientation with this tab pointing upwards, okay. And then let's reinstall it back in the headlight. Basic same idea. You wanna put the metal tabs in those side grooves there. When you turn it, tabs are under those screws. There we are. Once you get the wiring out of the way a little bit, install it fine. Make sure it's nice and tight and snug. 
and that it won't come out when you need a bottle or bump or something. Put the cap back on. This outer part of the cap goes on the outer part of the housing. Not inside, it goes on the outside part. Okay. Make sure you push it all the way in. Around all the edges. All the sides. Looks to be good. And then you might wonder, okay, he did everything except for the turn trigger bulb. How do I do that? Okay, to do the turn trigger bulb. It's actually under the headlight at the bottom of it here. Okay. You can see it there. Right, same idea as the other tabs and the other headlight parts. Turn to the left. Bam. Comes out. Bring it out. There you go. Okay. There it is. All right. You can see the hole in there. Okay. And same thing. Push it in. Turn to the left. This is a uh, not a uh, one degree bulb. This is actually a bulb that's, uh, you know, kind of offset. And there it is. See the two grooves here. Push it in, turn to the right, see it's in. And make sure when you're actually touching the bulb, like in this case, you're wearing uh, some kind of, you know, white gloves. You're not using your bare hand, basically, to touch the bulb, because if you do, the oils from your fingers might uh, prematurely burn this bulb out, but uh, I've got many of these bulbs, and I'm not really using this headlight right now, so I don't mind doing this, but... Uh, for people who actually want to prolong the length of their turn trigger bulbs, yeah, rather use like a towel or a napkin or some gloves to touch a bulb with. So, as you can see here now, there's some kind of like tab up here, right here, on this part. So, I think it matches up with the tab that's in this hole, right here, somewhere there. Let's try to stick it in. Slide to the left. You gotta wiggle it back in again, I guess. There we go. So this middle part here, right there, you can see right there, basically goes into this hole right here. There we go. It's in, turn to the right, bam, it's in. Make sure this is nice and tight and won't fall off because I've installed this on my car a few times and all of a sudden after maybe, let's say, 10 miles of driving, of hitting bombs and potholes on the road and whatnot, my church light in here didn't work anymore. So obviously it was a bad connection. So obviously somehow I installed this this bulb connector back in the headlight and it wasn't installed all the way. It was like kind of like cross thread installed. It was kind of installed instead of being flush, it was like off off center. So that means that it was a bad connection and as soon as you hit a couple of bumps, it just came more loose and it wouldn't work anymore. So when installing these um turn trigger bumps in these headlights, make sure you do a very good job and it's just a flush with the headlight housing. It's not off center. It's just flush. Alright guys. And that concludes the video today of my headlight and all its ball components. I hope this somewhat helps you in your headlight endeavors and daytime running light endeavors as well. And you guys get up under your hood and change out your bulbs, especially your headlight bulbs and your daytime running light bulbs. And just like that, guys, this video is all over. This is Mr. Gibson 2 reminding you. To check your remote second jettas, daytime running lights and headlights to see if they function. And if they don't function, either have them replaced at your local remote second authorized dealership or DIY it just like I showed you guys to do. I'll see you guys on the next video.